everybody, my name is Josh Rogers. Uh, this is the first tutorial for Uguay Ascends from the movie Kung Fu Panda. A lot of people have been asking me to do a tutorial. Uh, so here it is, this is my own arrangement. If you want the tabs, just like my video and uh, subscribe and I'll send them out to you. So anyway, here's starting off. Starts off in D minor, but not the normal D minor that you might know. It's an inversion like this here. So the picking hand is just doing thumb, index, middle. So we start with the thumb and index middle like this. The idea is just to keep all the notes ringing so that it sounds uh, like the track on the movie. So that's what you're trying to do, you're just trying to make things sound as close as you can to what you're hearing from the soundtrack or whatever type of song you're, you're trying to transcribe. And uh, yeah, just play, trying to play it as authentically as you can. It's not always easy because some of those instruments have a lot of sustain. So on the guitar, you know, we've got to try to hold those notes for as long as possible. So that's the first, uh, first part of the song. It's just holding that for two bars. in so here it's still the same almost the same fingering these two fingers stay here but now you're going to put your third finger on D uh, for the picking you want to emphasize the melodic notes so I'm going to use my annular finger for that and I'm going to be doing a light rest stroke like this so we're going to have a position shift up to another D minor actually it sounds like there's a lot of chords in the song but there's not really so it's just uh, going from one D minor shape to another one. It's a little bit of an unusual one, but it's still the same chord. So the fingering for the second chord from here is like that. It's a little bit strange, but that facilitates moving to the next chord a bit easier. So we've got. So I'll do that one more time. So there we've got an open D and the F, which is the third of the D minor chord. And then in the bass, we're going to go to an F on the eighth fret of the A string. And then here, like this. So that part there is just an A on the D string. And then an octave D on the first string. So. And then we're moving to this chord here. So this is a uh, like a D minor seventh or a kind of an F chord. So the, the stretch is a little bit tricky because we have to bar the 5th fret. The reason why we're doing that is so that the A in the melody is ready like that. And we're sustaining all of the bass notes. Once again, those are melodic notes of rest strokes. And then a position shift to the 3rd fret the bar and this is a G minor chord so I'm picking two notes at the end there the A and a D and then shifting to a it's actually still a G minor but there's no third so you, know, you can't really tell if it's a minor or a major but it is still a minor and then shifting to the first fret uh, to an F major chord and then yeah so if we tr if we try that whole section again and then we're to this chord here that's nice and easy and you can give it a little little bit of vibrato there because you're just holding that chord okay now we're into the like the second part 
which you can see it's related to that chord that we should do there. But this time we're fingering it like this, just like a C chord. Shift here to octaves, two A's, and the F in the bass, and then a shift up to the tenth fret, octaves again. So, and then shifting to this chord. So that's a bar. On the uh, where is it? on the eighth thread, and we're sort of outlining what most of you might know as a seventh shape. Yeah, that lovely chord there. So we're going from these octaves. And then this is a bit of a tricky shift, so you've got to practice this one a bit. You're going to go from here to a bar on the 5th fret, and these two fingers up here. Like that. So. You could finger it like that, it just depends. It's up to you. So. That kind of chord there. And then back to this chord, which is the G minor. Here. So we've got an open string there. And we're just putting the B flat in the bass there. And back to the third position. And then we're gonna just do a series of C chords with a suspension thrown in at the second section. Suspension. at the third fret so there I'm at the uh, eighth fret you might be wondering why I'm using sort of strange fingerings little finger and all that sort of stuff but it's really just to use a principle in, in classical guitar playing or, or any kind of guitar playing where you're really looking at your technique and that's the principle of a guide finger. The guide finger sort of stays on the same string. And it helps you negotiate difficult passages uh, a little bit more easily. So, here. So we're barring on the 8th fret there. And then we've got some harmonics coming up. So, you know, with your harmonics, you've just got to search around to try and find them. You know, even I miss them from time to time. But, uh, you know, you can use sort of whatever little guidelines you might have on your rosette or, you know, the guess the distance from the last fret. The, you know, everyone's got their own way of doing it, but practice is the thing that's going to help you find it, you know, most easily. So you've got this, uh, and then we're going to have a position shift to this chord, which you've seen a few times already. that chord and then you're gonna move up to this which is actually uh, like a G minor chord so you're gonna be picking that and then this is probably one of the hardest parts of the song that part there so That one, you know, if you're trying to practice that, you could just go through without picking. So you just sort of, you know, you, you practice that one. Don't don't play, just hold it there and then move like this. Because you're gonna be finding that, uh, you're gonna be having to focus on your right hand for that because you've gotta find those you know, harmonics and that's not really an easy thing to do. The last thing you wanna be doing is having to concentrate on both hands at the same time. So yeah, just practice this shift a few times. So you're going from the G minor there to a G minor here as well. Same chord actually. So there, you could sort of say that's the seventh position. 
and then down to the third. And you can see I'm using this guide finger principle here to make the shift quite easy. Don't lift this finger off, just leave it. And you'll find that it'll help you find this area here. And then to the harmonics. And here. And you've got that bit there. So this section here is just a lead up. So we're just going to hold that there. And then we're going to be barring on the 8th fret. And our 2nd and 3rd fingers are going to be on the 10th frets of the G and the E string. And we're going to be playing B flat in the bass. So there's a little bit of a stretch out here. And then we stay on the 8th position, but we're going to release the bar a little bit so that this open A can ring through. And then we're going to move to the B flat, in the first position. And then we're moving to an A minor. And then up to the minor 7th. And then, yeah, and that's basically the entire song. Because there you start again, go back to the beginning. But the second time round, I finger it slightly differently because the final, the final bar, I do some natural harmonics at the 12th fret. So I actually change the position of this uh, penultimate F. Instead of playing it here, I actually play it uh, on the 8th fret of the A string. The reason I do that is so it's easier for me to get to these harmonics. So that would go something like this. You don't have to do it that way, but it's just the way that I like to do it. And you can use this open G from the A minor 7th chord. While it's ringing, you can move your hand. That's much easier. Uh, that's the tutorial. Well, once again, I uh, hope you enjoy the piece and I'll be posting a lot more tutorials as time passes of some of my own arrangements and also some arrangements that a lot of other cool guitarists on YouTube are doing. Uh, a lot of them it seems like they don't have time to do their own tabs or, uh, or make their own tutorials, but um, I'll be doing some of that. So yeah, subscribe and you'll, uh, it'll keep you up to date with everything that I'm doing. Okay, have fun. Mm -hmm.